Hello, welcome to my kitchen here in Kuala Lumpur. Today I am planning to cook all of the recipes I plan to eat during the week at one time. I'm very excited about this because I've been feeling uninspired to cook, so I thought we would just take a couple hours in the kitchen, knock out some really easy plant-based recipes, and just get all our cooking done for the week at one time. So before we start, I'm going to quick make a fun drink. I like to enjoy a beverage while I cook, and then we're gonna do a little bit of meal prep before we basically chuck all the ingredients together or blend them or whatever we need to do, and then we will be set and ready to go for the week. I'm currently taking a break from coffee, but lately I have been loving these mocha matchas. So I just got back from the store and I left out quite a few of the things that I need to prep before we make our meal. So I need to make some mirepoix, however you say that. Basically, carrots, celery, and onions diced up for two recipes. I need to chop up some butternut squash for a soup, shred some zucchini for some almond butter, zucchini. Uh, am I making bars or muffins? I can't remember. Um, beets I'm going to use in some burgers and then potato for chickpea pot pie. So let's just chop up some of this. I also need to make some really quick cashew milk. So we're going to do that first and then jump into the really simple recipes. Here in Malaysia, it's common to have a wet and a dry kitchen. So this is my wet kitchen. There's a vent where all the spices and the strong cooking smells can leave the house. And this is where I leave my blender and food processor. And we are just gonna blend one cup of cashews with four cups of milk. I don't even strain it because I found that I have no pulp left. So I've just blended it for a long time. Super rich and creamy and perfect for our chickpea pot pie. So let's quickly make that. I seriously am a mess today. I don't know what I'm thinking. I was gonna slowly turn it on to get rid of the bubbles and I forgot that I hadn't turned it off the high. So I'm just gonna leave this in the video because it's real life. I'm going to save the milk that I have in this container and then I'm gonna clean up my mess and move on and try to slow down because I am a crazy woman today. Maybe that's why it's called the wet kitchen. I'm gonna deal with all this later. Let's start with chopping up some veggies. So I've got a couple bowls here. One is for a lentil soup and one is for the chickpea pot pie. This is for my scraps. That way I can just stay organized with how much I need to cut up and not cut up too much. So let's get chopping. I was seriously such a mess this day, but we just continued to move forward, cleaned up the wet kitchen, got a ton of veggies prepped and ready to go. I highly recommend if you're doing a meal prep like this to choose recipes that have overlapping ingredients so that you can save yourself a ton of time and money by cutting up a lot of similar ingredients that you can use in a variety of ways. Okay, it's a little messy, but we got a ton done. So I've got shredded zucchini for some muffins and I kept all my scraps because I'm going to attempt to make homemade veggie broth. I just have a bag of scraps in the freezer and once it's full, I'm going to make broth. I've got everything I need for a lentil soup, um, all the stuff I need for chickpea pot pie. These are for both of these recipes. I need potatoes in both of those and then some cubed butternut squash. So this feels good. Now I think we can attack these recipes and get them done really quick. This is my new favorite thing to make broth from my scraps. Definitely a money saver. So I'm not normally a freezer meal kind of girl and I always reuse my Ziploc bags as much as possible and I currently don't have any available so I did have to buy some more. If this is something that I love, I will definitely get those silicone reusable Ziploc bags, especially the ones with the wide base. But we are gonna start assembling some meals. I'm gonna label this one lentil soup. I plan to eat it this week, so I don't really need to date it. All right, let's assemble this soup. I don't have one of those nifty bag holders, so we're just gonna use this. Butternut squash, two cups of all the veggies, one to two cups potatoes. One and three fourths cups brown lentils. Three cloves of garlic, a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do a little more. Teaspoon herbs, four to five cups broth. I need to stir it. Try not to spill. 
All right, one more meal, done. My wet kitchen's still crazy, but we are gonna whip up some vegan cheese sauce for mac and cheese. My kids really like this sauce. Um, I've made it before, so I know they will like it, and it makes a ton, so this will be a few meals worth, and I will tell you everything that goes in it. One and a half cup of cashews, two cups of water, half cup nooch, nutritional yeast, three tablespoons of lemon juice, Salt, garlic powder, and turmeric. And this is optional in the recipe, but it makes my kids really like it. So I'm gonna put in a block of vegan cheese. And then we blend with the lid on. <laughs> Let's taste it. Some more salt and it'll taste better as it cooks. I know this is just a sauce, but having this prepared makes a simple lunch or dinner so easy. I would just boil pasta and frozen peas and pour this on top and heat it through. So this will be so handy. I'll show you at the end of this video how I used all of these ingredients throughout the week. All right, next thing we're gonna make are some blender muffins sweetened with medjool dates and maple syrup. Two cups of rolled oats, two cups of shredded zucchini, Eight pitted medjool dates. Sorry, this is a little mushy, but I'm using half of a banana to cut back on some of the oil. Fourth cup coconut oil. Fourth cup maple syrup. Teaspoon of baking powder. Teaspoon of baking soda. A little salt and two flax eggs. And now we're gonna blend again with the top on. It's supposed to be kind of a chunky batter, they said, which that sounds yucky, but looks about right. Now we'll just pour it into our muffin pan. This is definitely going to be a recipe I make on a regular basis. They don't look super pretty at the end because they don't get really puffy, but the ingredients are so wholesome and my kids really enjoyed them. Okay, next I'm making a spin off of the last seitan burgers that I showed you guys. I'm going to put three of these beets in here. Now that I've made these burgers a couple times, I'm ready to start experimenting with the flavor. So this time we're gonna make black bean chipotle seitan burgers. So I've got three beets that I'm going to process so that they're smaller and already broken down. The beets make these burgers look meaty, just the color that they add, which is so nice. Next, I'm gonna add half cup of black beans, add garlic powder, cumin, onion powder, add in a little liquid smoke, and add in some chipotle peppers that I freeze. If I open a jar, I usually don't need all of them, so I just freeze them. And I have one pepper and some sauce in each of these, so I'm gonna add two. We'll see how spicy these are tablespoon of peanut butter, and that is all. Next, I'm gonna add one and a half cups of vital wheat gluten. I'm gonna add just a tablespoon of water. So this is what the mixture looks like, and now we're gonna form them into patties and steam them. I think I've made these burgers in a video, but I have yet to post that video. That's why I was saying I've already showed you this recipe and I'm tweaking it a little bit. So you can keep your eyes out for the basic recipe for these burgers that I made in an upcoming video. But it has been really fun to experiment with different spices and flavors and mix-ins. Next up, I started to work on the chickpea pot pie. This is a recipe that I am currently really enjoying. I made it a couple weeks ago and wanted to make it again. I loved it so much. So this recipe is from, from my bowl and you make a cashew, a thick cheesy cashew sauce, I guess, that you are going to mix with some sauteed onion, celery, carrots, chickpeas, potatoes. And when you combine all of these things, put it into a pie pan with some pie crust, you end up with a really delicious vegan chickpea pot pie.
So one reason I wanted to make chickpea pot pie is because I've been really into pie crust lately. So we made apple pie the other day and the crust recipe made two crusts and I have one left over. So we're gonna make just a topped chickpea pot pie or there will only be one crust just on top. So I'm gonna let this thaw for a couple minutes and then roll it out and we'll be ready to assemble our chickpea pot pie. So once all your veggies and potatoes are sauteed and you have some cooked chickpeas added in, you're gonna stir everything together with that thick cashew milk sauce along with some frozen peas. I have some extra chickpeas that I want to add, so I'm just going to chuck. Should I chuck these in? Yeah, let's chuck them in. I'm going to taste it for salt in case, because you want the filling to be flavorful. Taste it. Needs a little more salt and black pepper. All right, taste it again. Mm, much better. Okay, my burgers have been steaming for 25 minutes, so I'm gonna let them cool completely. As you can see, they puff up and expand. So we're just gonna stick them here with my muffins. It's coming along. And then once they're cooled, we will freeze them. If you wanted to save yourself even more time, you could always buy a pre-made pie crust, but pie crust is so easy to make, whether it's vegan or whether you use real butter. I just use my food processor to blitz all the ingredients together, add in some cold water until a dough forms, and then I just chill it in the fridge or freezer until I need it. Oh man, we'll work on it, but pot pie. I am so sweaty and I cannot even tell you how messy my kitchen is. I don't know if it's ever been this messy as of all the spills I made. So we're gonna make pizza crust just for quick and simple pizza dinners. We have pizza and show night once a week so it'll be so nice to have pizza crust already made. We'll just top it with marinara and cheese and add a protein and some veggies on the side and we'll be good to go. So let's make crust and then clean up this mess. So one of my new favorite YouTubers is Becky from Acre Homestead. Um, she definitely doesn't eat a plant-based diet, but I get so much inspiration and recipe ideas from watching her videos. And I secretly wish I had a homestead and could grow all my food, but that might be for another season of life. But she has a freezer pizza dough that is so easy. You just basically make the dough, stick it in a bag, and then put it in the freezer. And then the dough will rise as you let it thaw in the fridge the day that you need it. So there is no waiting required really. You just need to get your dough created, stick it in the freezer, and then when you are ready to make pizza, you let it thaw overnight in the fridge and that is when your dough will rise and be perfectly ready for you to spread it out, add your toppings, and yeah, this is definitely gonna be a staple for our pizza show nights. I actually had some friends stop over right after I made this dough, so I forgot to get it in the freezer right away, and so it started to puff up before I could freeze it, but it still worked out great. And this is an overview of everything I made. It might not look like much, but this fed my family for definitely a week, if not more. Now on to the meals we enjoyed throughout the week. For the first night is gonna be mac and cheese, or penne and cheese, with my already pre-made cheese sauce roasted broccoli and we'll add some peas and then people can either add chickpeas or tuna or whatever protein they want. We have some friends visiting too, so be super simple. I guess I'm a kid at heart because this might have been one of my favorite meals this week. It was so rich, creamy, sticky, and so comforting. I also really enjoyed having pre-made burgers in my freezer. As you can see, one of those burgers on the saute pan was a store-bought one, but I actually loved the look of my homemade ones even more, and they tasted great with all the condiments. Another one of my favorite meals this week was the chickpea pot pie. I didn't end up freezing it. I just had it in the fridge for a couple days before we were ready to eat it. So I covered it with some aluminum foil to let it bake for about a half an hour before I removed the foil and let it bake until the top got crispy, brown, and puffy. And this is definitely my husband and my favorite meal. Currently, my kids aren't a huge fan of pot pies or casseroles yet. They are definitely more Asian in the food they like, but they tried it and we ate it with some salad on the side and me and my husband really enjoyed the leftovers throughout the week. 
For our fourth dinner, we enjoyed pizza. So the night before we needed the pizza dough, I took it out of the freezer and put it in the fridge to thaw. So we are on the fourth night after I made all the food for the week. So it's our fourth dinner and I am loving this cook once, eat all week method. It has made mealtime so easy and we still have a ton of leftovers. So tonight we are doing pizza. I thawed the dough in the fridge overnight. It's been sitting on the counter for about 15 minutes and I'm gonna let it sit a little bit longer. It's our show night, so we're gonna do pizza. All I have to do is cut this dough into two parts, spread it out on a baking sheet, top it with some marinara and cheese and whatever protein you want. We only have canned salmon, which I have never bought but I randomly bought it the other day thinking maybe my kids would like it in a pinch. So they do love a salmon pizza from a restaurant that their friend always buys them. So we are gonna make that, see how it goes. And dinner is super simple tonight. So let's make some pizza. This was definitely my kids' favorite meal this week and it was so easy for me as I already had the crust prepared. I obviously have to still do a little bit of prep work with all of these meals, but so much less than I would have if I hadn't prepared all of these items at the beginning of the week. So I just cut the dough in half, spread them out into a pizza round, covered them with sauce and cheese, and we were good to go. That is a beautiful pizza. I baked it for 15 minutes at 425 Fahrenheit, about 220 Celsius and this crust is so thick and doughy and I'm sure my kids are gonna love this. So it's been exactly a week since I did my cook once, eat all week meal prep, and I still have a whole dinner left to cook. So I am going to thaw this lentil soup, I'm trying to thaw it in this bowl, it doesn't really fit, but tonight I'll just pop it in the Instant Pot and dinner will be ready. So once my soup had mostly thawed, I just put it into my Instant Pot and I just followed the instructions for the recipe, which all of these recipes I will leave in the description box below. But I cooked it on manual on high for 15 minutes until soft and ready to go. The recipe suggests to add in some fresh kale after it's cooked to allow the kale to wilt, as well as some lemon juice. I personally wish I hadn't added in the lemon juice. I don't know why, I thought it would pair perfectly, but I liked it a lot better without the lemon juice, so maybe just keep that in mind or allow people to squeeze it on themselves if they want. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some new recipe inspiration from me. I thoroughly enjoyed this way of meal prep, so definitely try it out.